بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم بیک ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان دا لاسٹ کپل آف لیکچرز آئی ڈسکس دی سیکوینس نیٹ ورکس آف دیز فور کمپوننٹس آف پاور سسٹمس اینڈ دی میجر آبزرویشنس دیٹ وی آئی مین مائنڈ are the positive and negative sequence current they do not flow through the zero sequence impedance it is only the zero sequence current that flow through the zero sequence impedance and we also i mean uh, observe that if let's say the neutral point of the y connected load or even in case of the let's say rotating machines where uh, the uh, windings are i mean three phase windings or in case of even the transformers where the primary and secondary side are three phase uh, we are talking about three phase transformers so uh, i mean we also observe that if the neutral point of the uh, y connection is not grounded so then the zero sequence current will be zero meaning to say that the zero sequence network will be an open circuit so these were a couple of observation that we uh, made while we were discussing the sequence impedances of these various components of the of the power system and we also observed that uh, the impedance offered to the zero sequence current is Three Z n, where Z n is the impedance to the ground. Also, as we know that uh, the neutral current is equal to three I naught. So we observe that uh, in the path of the current I naught, I mean. Uh, or the impedance offered to the zero sequence current it's 3 zn but actually uh, the impedance is zn and we know that the neutral current is 3 i naught so the impedance offered to the neutral current is zn because if we multiply this current with zn we will get the voltage drop across the impedance zn so we made this couple of observation and now the important observation once again was that uh, if the neutral point of the y connection is not grounded then the sequence the zero sequence network will be an open circuit and both these positive and negative sequence current they do not flow through the impedance to the ground so we discuss the sequence networks of these various components of power systems and uh, in the very i mean last lecture just before this one i also discuss the uh, sequence uh, impedances of the transformers and we discuss majorly three different uh, situations or three different cases uh, we discuss the case of the uh, transformer where both the primary and secondary side are y connected and the neutral point of both the connections is uh, i mean grounded so in this case we uh, i mean discuss that the uh, path i mean uh, to the ground is complete or there is basically a path for the flow of the zero sequence current so this is the primary side that is the secondary side and both are basically connected through the impedance we discussed that before that we uh, model the transformer only with the leakage uh, impedance so in this case where both the sides are connected to the ground and both are y connected there is a path for the zero sequence current to flow then we discuss another case where we took i mean uh, situation having the primary side of the transformer connected to the ground and the secondary side is uh, i mean uh, the neutral is not grounded so then we discuss that uh, 
on the secondary side as I mentioned in the beginning even of this lecture that if the neutral point is not connected to the ground then the secondary I mean the, the uh, zero sequence network will be open circuit which meaning which means that the uh, zero sequence current will be zero so now if we look to the secondary side it means that the zero sequence current on the secondary side will be zero and correspondingly as both are y connections so uh, the zero sequence current on the primary side will also be zero because both are i mean the transformer we have induction phenomena the primary and the secondary side current are connected uh, we have i mean you are very well familiar with uh, these expressions so uh, in this case when there is no path for the zero sequence current on the secondary side there will also be i mean no zero sequence current on the primary side as well so that's why the situation uh, can be represented like that where the zero sequence network is an open circuit then we also discuss the case where we have the primary side uh, y connected uh, winding the neutral point is grounded and the secondary side winding is delta and uh, as we have discussed that the currents basically on the delta side it only circulate in the uh, delta connection it do not leave the terminals so even if we have let's say uh, a connection to the ground on the primary side there will be an isolation because the currents only circulate in the delta it do not leave the terminals so it means that there will be an isolation between the primary and the secondary side so in this case we have a path to the ground for the y connection for the primary side but the secondary side is isolated for the zero sequence network so it means that there will be a zero sequence current on the primary side but the zero sequence current on the secondary side will be zero so both these sides primary and secondary are isolated we made this discussion also and then after uh, discussing the sequence networks or the sequence appearances of the of the transformer then uh, I solved an example where we uh, consider almost all the important parts of a power system. So in this particular case we have a generator Y connected and the neutral is connected to the ground then we have a transformer transmission line and also loads which are Y connected in one case the neutral is connected to the ground to the impedance ZN and in other case it was the I mean the grounding impedance was zero so we uh, I mean discuss the sequence networks or the sequence impedances of all these components of power system and then we solved an example where all these four components were considered loads y connected loads transmission lines rotating machine for instance a synchronous generator and a transform so we took this particular uh, I mean example and then based on the knowledge that we uh, gained uh, when we were discussing the sequence networks of the different components of power system we applied that knowledge and then for this whole network we draw uh, the three sequence networks and uh, I mean uh, we uh, then discuss that this the positive sequence network is I even mentioned in the beginning of this uh, lecture that uh, the grounding impedance will only be considered in the zero sequence network and also when we were discussing the rotating uh, machines I, uh, I mean the uh, synchronous uh, generators let's say we uh, observed that the Uh, voltage source only exists in the positive sequence uh, network and in the zero and negative sequence network there is no voltage source so uh, based on that knowledge we then draw the positive sequence network and we also discuss this point that uh, 
the positive sequence impedance is uh, I mean taken either as a subtransient reactance or subtransient impedance uh, and the or could be even the transient or the steady state uh, inductive reactance. So, in this particular case, we took the uh, positive sequence impedance as the subtransient inductive reactance of the generator. So, uh, considering now that the positive sequence work has a voltage source, similarly for these motors, although we didn't discuss the sequence network of the of the synchronous motors, but I mean by similar arguments uh, we can draw the sequence uh, networks of the of the synchronous uh, motors as well. So as in the positive sequence uh, I mean we have voltage source in the other two sequence network the voltage source is zero or there is no voltage source. So now based on that knowledge which we have gained for the various components of the power system when we were discussing the sequence network now this is the sequence the positive sequence network for this whole uh, system where we have two parallel connected uh, motors and also we have transformers and transmission line and the generator so this is the positive sequence network and we also discussed that the positive and negative sequence uh, impedances of the transformer are the same because we have static element doesn't matter I mean to the positive, negative and zero sequence current, the same impedance will be offered. So uh, also we discussed that also for the lines where the positive and negative sequence impedances are the same. And then we discussed for the lines that for transmission lines that the zero sequence impedance is usually much larger than the positive or negative sequence uh, impedance and is approximately three times the impedance. Uh, I mean of the positive or negative sequence. So X0 is approximately three times X1 and positive and negative sequence impedance of the transmission lines are the same. Similar is the case for the uh, transformers. So now uh, I mean accounting for all these facts and uh, considering that the uh, source only exists in the positive sequence network we draw these uh, networks for this whole system. This is the positive sequence network, this is the negative sequence network where there is no voltage source uh, and this is the zero sequence network because if one look to the to the transformer it's delta y case where the y is connected to the ground but as I discussed even in this lecture that there is an isolation between the primary and secondary side so that's why one can clearly see an isolation between the point K and L where transformer is connected. So there is an isolation between point K and L and similarly we have an isolation between M and N because the transformer I mean uh, is, the, is the same where we have again a delta and primary uh, connections so there is again an isolation. So that's why there is an iso another isolation and then as I discussed that the impedance to the ground only appear in the zero sequence network so for one motor we have the impedance to the ground and in the other case there is no impedance the impedance is zero and also on the, the generator side we have also the impedance to the ground so both these are considered in the zero sequence network and it is I mean account I mean it is uh, shown here for both the cases so uh, I mean uh, these three networks we draw after discussing the individual uh, components. So with that I ended the last lecture. So this was a quick revision although it took uh, I mean <laughs> uh, some time but anyhow even in this lecture now I will solve the problem. Uh, so it will be the same problem only uh, or the same situation only we will consider just one mode. So I mean it was important to revise the previous content in order to clearly understand the today's lecture. So uh, with this now I I mean end the discussion on the last lecture or with this we end the revision of the of the last lecture and now let me start the uh, lecture uh, that we will I mean 
discuss or the contents that we will discuss uh, in today's lecture. So, uh, we will now start the discussion on um, today's lecture. And uh, with this lecture, I will end the discussion on uh, analysis of faults. So, uh, in today's lecture, uh, I will talk about the analysis of single line to ground fault, which is an unbalanced fault. If you remember, I mean, we discussed it before that faults are of uh, generally two types. One are balanced faults, one, are one the other type is the unbalanced fault. And uh, I mean, we discussed the balanced fault and then we uh, even solved the problem to get clear understanding of the theoretical concepts. and then I start talking about the unbalanced faults and we discuss the symmetrical components uh, which is a key to, to analyze the uh, unbalanced faults. And uh, afterwards we discuss the sequence networks and now I will, uh, I mean, analyze um, an unbalanced faults using the knowledge that we have gained in the last couple of lectures. So, in unbalanced faults, I mean, there are further, uh, I mean, different types single line to ground line to line line to line to ground which is I mean double line to ground or could be any even an open conductor so these are the different uh, I mean types of the unbalanced faults so in this course I will only talk about the uh, single line to to ground fault uh, and maybe the other types you can cover I be maybe in some other course. So, I will only talk about the analysis of the single line to ground fault. So, uh, now let's start the, the uh, discussion uh, or let's start the contents that we will discuss uh, in today's lecture. So, uh, let's say we in the beginning made some general uh, discussion and then we will start talking about the single line to, to ground uh, fault. So, uh, let's say we have a uh, we have a general uh, system. We have a general system where uh, let's say um, these are the uh, terminals where uh, I mean a fault can appear. So uh, we have a general three phase bus I mean in a balanced system so let's say that is the general situation where these are the terminals uh, where a possible fault may appear and uh, these are the three phase currents so let's say we have a, a balanced system and uh, we assume that uh, before the fault let's say or uh, I mean uh, in general because when a fault let's say a short circuit type of fault appear then the magnitude of the current is much larger compared to the case when the normal or the let's say the uh, I mean the re even the rated value of the current flows. So compared to that case when a fault let's say short circuit type of fault appear then the magnitude of the current is much larger compared to the normal situation. So even we can I mean uh, neglect in comparison to the case where a short circuit type of fault appear the normal currents uh, or even we let's say assume that the system is running under no load condition so in the under I mean when we have uh, no load so obviously the currents in all the three phases will be uh, zero so we assume a general situation let's say we have a three phase bus these are the terminals where Mm, a fault may let's say take place and these are the three phase currents and uh, we have uh, the voltage to the ground which we represent with the uh, VAG, AG is the subscript similarly we have the uh, voltage uh, for the phase B to the ground and for phase C to the ground and these are the phase currents and this is the ground point so this is a general I mean um, scenario or a general representation of the system uh, where a fault let's say may appear on any of the of the bus bus A or bus B or bus C so 
uh, we are uh, now uh, let's say considering a general uh, system and I discussed that uh, let's say the system is running under no load condition so then all the three phase currents are zero or in other way to understand this uh, situation is that if let's say a fault appear on any of these buses so then the current magnitude will be much larger during the fault so in comparison to that the normal currents more or less uh, are negligible so that's why we uh, either assuming that the system is running under no load condition so then the currents are zero or we assume i mean or we we i mean consider the fact that during the short circuit type of fault because the magnitude of the current is much larger compared to the normal situation so that's why these currents under normal situations are considered as zero so this is the general i mean representation of the of the uh, system so now let uh, we take now the case of the of the single line to ground fault as i mentioned in the beginning of this uh, i mean lecture that in this uh, or in today's lecture we will analyze the single line to to ground fault so now let us assume we have this particular case where we have a three phase uh, let's say generator and uh, let's say uh, these are the terminals of the of the let's say or the buses three phase um, bus so this is let's say phase a bus phase b bus and phase c bus or the terminals of the of the generator so let us now let uh, consider that let's say on the uh, terminal a or on the bus a uh, short circuit type of fault appear and now the terminal is connected to the ground through the grounding impedance that we call the fault impedance and from terminal a to the ground we have the voltage va or vag because the voltage on the ground is zero so either we call it va or vag and the neutral point is connected to the ground through the impedance zf so now this is the case where a single line to ground fault where one line is connected to the ground now through the fault impedance. So let's say a short circuit type of fault appears on the uh, let's say bus A or on the terminal A. So now uh, uh, I mean uh, as I have mentioned even uh, before uh, when we were discussing the, the balance type of fault that uh, we made some, some assumptions and one assumption is that uh, when even the fault appear we discuss that uh, we have a profile of current where we have a sub transient current and then we have a transient current and then we have a steady state current so uh, when a fault appear at that instant i mean we made some assumption and one assumption was that uh, when the fault appear we at that instant assume that all the generators in in the system are running at their rated uh, voltage and rated frequency so i mean uh, with that assumption which state that all the generators are running at their rated voltage and rated frequency uh, so then it means that at the instant of fall the the voltage will be the same as ea because the generator at the instant of fault we still assume uh, that they are running at their rated voltages and at the rated frequency so then at the fault instant we will assume the voltage to be the to be the same so uh, with this assumption now let's say uh, we uh, look back into the into the system from terminal a which is the fault terminal and then as we have discussed we will uh, draw the the sequence networks and then we will analyze the uh, fault so the sequence networks uh, as i have uh, mentioned that if let's say this is the terminal where the fault appear or i mean even uh, this terminal not necessarily to to be the terminal of the generator even let's say uh, if the fault appear uh, let's for instance if we consider that the fault let's say as uh, we discuss this problem let's say we even uh, take the case where the fault may appear let's say on this particular bus so then these will be the terminal uh, from where we will look back into the to the system 
So it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not necessarily that we only consider, let's say, the terminal of the generator where the fault appears. It may appear even on this terminal. So I mean, we will accordingly draw the uh, sequence uh, networks. So it's not necessarily that only the fault appears on the terminals of the of the generator. It may appear even on the on the road side. Bus. So we are anyhow at the moment we are considering the case where uh, we assume that the fault appear on the terminal A. So now looking back into the system, uh, one can draw the sequence uh, networks. And as I have discussed that E1, uh, when the fault appear at that instant, we assume that the generators are running at rated conditions providing rated voltage and rated frequency. So now looking back into the system from point A, uh, the sequence networks will look like that. We discussed this even before. So now uh, these are the sequence networks looking back into the, to the system from the uh, uh, terminal A. As I mentioned that we make this assumption that the generators are still running at their rated values which means that now uh, we will have uh, I mean a source only in the positive sequence network and that we assume to be the same as the pre fault voltage. I mean I, I, I clearly discussed this assumption that even at the instant of fault, we assume that all the generators are running at their rated voltage and rated frequency. So, uh, now looking back into the system from terminal A, and as I mentioned, not necessarily this terminal is the terminal of the generator, it could be even another point, even on the lower side. So, now these are the three sequence networks. This is the zero sequence network positive sequence network and the negative sequence network. And as we have discussed that only the source will be in the positive sequence network. So now these are basically the Thevenin equivalent circuits weave from the fault terminal. So weave from the fault terminal these are the equivalent Thevenin equivalent circuits. We have a positive sequence uh, circuit or network negative and a zero where we have only the voltage source in the positive sequence network and these are the sequence impedances zero positive and negative so now i mean looking from the fault terminal back to the system these are the uh, sequence networks and uh, now uh, as i mentioned that uh, we assume the voltage on one of the phase and this is the fault impedance so the fault condition in the phase domain can be written like that because Va will be equal to the voltage drop from point A to the ground will be equal to the product of Zf into Ia. And also since uh, we assume no load condition, so then the currents in the other two phases will be zero. So now writing, I mean these two conditions uh, we get that the uh, fault condition in the phase domain where the current in the other two phases are zero and the voltage from the terminal A to the ground from the terminal A to the ground will be a product of Zf into Ia which is shown here. So this is from voltage from terminal A to the ground which is equal to Ia into Zf. Now we can even transform these two uh, expressions into the sequence domain and we made this discussion quite uh, in detail before that if you want to convert the uh, let's say the phase quantities the phase quantities let's say currents into the uh, sequence current we should know the transformation matrix A and these are the sequence currents so if we know the phase current, we can get the sequence current by taking, let's say, the inverse of transformation matrix. So we will get the sequence components. So now, uh, these are the three sequence uh, currents, zero sequence, positive and negative sequence. And 
this is the transformation of the or rather the inverse of the transformation matrix we discussed it before and these are the uh, phase currents so now uh, as one can clearly see that the phase b current and phase c current is assumed zero because we are considering no load condition so uh, these three sequence current will be equal to 1 over 3 i a i a i a because if we even take the multiplication of the matrix this is the resultant matrix so now i mean it, if we one look to these two matrices it is clear that all these three sequence currents are the same for this particular case single line to ground fault also now using the fact that the voltage on the phase A, we discussed that before, it is it can be decomposed into three sequence components, zero sequence component, positive sequence component and a negative sequence component. Similarly, the phase A current will have three sequence components, zero, positive and negative. Also, I mean one can even, can even if let's say, we assume these three sequence component and we multiply the transformation matrix, one will exactly get this case. So, I mean this is the phase A voltage and this is the phase A current. So, and these are the sequence uh, components of the voltages and of the, of the current. So, now from this, uh, I mean expression, one can write that uh, IA, I mean as a sum of these three sequence components, uh, one can uh, write that and VAG Although, I mean, you will see different symbols, but I mean, I have discussed it even before. Whether we represent the voltage with U or with V, this is European uh, style and this is the American style. So, I mean, both these represent the same quantity, which is voltage. So, now, from 2, as V or UA, which is the same, and now let's, and also considering now the current having three sequence components, so we can rewrite this expression like that. This is now the sequence component of the voltage A and ZF, which is the phase, which is the fault impedance into the current IA having these three sequence components. So now this will be equal to as we have already now uh, derived that all the three sequence current in case of the single line to ground fault are the same. So uh, I mean I node I1 and I2 are the same so let's say we replace I node and I2 with I1 so this will become 3 I1 so this will be now 3 ZF I1 and fault domain in C I mean fault condition in sequence domain now seeing that the three sequence currents are the same and the phase A voltage or the sum of the uh, sequence voltages is equal to 3 ZF I1 these, this is the negative sequence, this is the zero sequence voltage, this is the positive sequence voltage, this is the negative sequence voltage. So, now, I mean, knowing this uh, condition that for the single line to ground fault, all the three sequence current are the same, and the sum of the three sequence voltages is equal to 3 ZF I1. What does it mean, basically? Or what we can derive from these two uh, relations? It states that, or it, I mean, uh, depicts that we can connect because we discussed that the sequence networks look like that. And since all these three currents are the same, and the sum of these voltages, zero sequence, positive and negative, is equal to 3ZFI1. So it means that we can connect the sequence networks, these three sequence networks in series, if one look here, at the fault terminals through the impedance 3ZF because that is 3ZF and as I mentioned all these sequence current are the same and these are the sum of the voltages. So these two expression now depicts that we can connect the sequence networks in series at the fault terminals through the impedance 3ZF. So now this situation 
will look like that. We will connect these three sequence uh, networks in series because the sequence currents are the same. And on the right side, we have 3ZF I1. So now this will be the resulting situation where the three sequence networks are connected in series and because the sequence currents are the same so they are connected at the fault terminal let's say the fault terminal A through 3ZF because we found that the sum of the three sequence voltages was equal to 3ZF I1 and since the same current I mean the sequence currents are the same so uh, now this is the resulting situation where the three sequence currents are connected in series and because these currents are the same so uh, that will let's say flow through the impedance 3ZF where ZF is the impedance to the fault. So now from this particular uh, let's say case of from this particular network or circuit one can found one can find the uh, currents because these three currents are the same so now and we have one source basically what is the pre fault voltage we have so now having this source and knowing all that the currents are the same because this is a series circuit now currents must be the same so we have a voltage source we now these are the impedances and this is the impedance to the to the ground so the current where the sequence currents are the same will be equal to the voltage source divided by the sum of all the impedances which is z0 z1 z2 and 3zf because they are connected in series so now we can find the uh, sequence currents so fault currents will be then because we have even uh, discussed before that the phase a current is equal to the sum of the three sequence uh, currents we discussed that before the phase a current can be written as the sum of the three sequence uh, currents so now the current in the phase a will be equal to i0 plus i1 plus i2 equal to 3i1 because all these are the same and now 3i1 replacing this expression for i1 which is this one uh, here so 3 will now so this is basically this is this is the expression for i1 and 3 i1 so i a which is the sum of these three sequence currents will become 3 i1 because all these are equal and then this is i1 so this is 3 i1 so now uh, similarly as we discussed before that i mean uh, the other two currents are zero so uh, i mean why we can even show it here because uh, if you remember we discussed that uh, if let's say a phaser is multiplied with an operator a that rotate that particular phaser by uh, 120 degree anti clockwise direction so now ib because we have abc sequence which is positive sequence so a will be followed by B and B will be followed by C. So uh, IB current, uh, as we know, I mean, we discussed it even just before that the phase uh, currents can be written as transformation matrix A and sequence currents. So here that situation is shown. So uh, the phase B current is zero and the phase C current is, also, is, is zero because it is, I mean, the three sequence current are the same. So it is shown here that I1 which is 1 plus A square plus A because the sum of these since it is at 120 degree this is 240 or minus 120 and 1. So if we add 3 uh, let us say phasers which are 120 degree apart so the sum will be 0. So that is why and even we discussed before that since the fault appear only on uh, phase A so the other two currents are 0. So the phase A current will be equal to. 3 we have divided by the sum of these impedances and important is that let's say if we have bolted type fault where the impedance to the ground will be zero so then this term will be zero this is important if it is a bolted type fault where the impedance to the gr i mean the impedance to the ground is zero so then we will have only these three terms so 
now in this way we have found the uh, i mean the phase currents and also uh, i mean we can um, find the uh, the sequence component of the line to ground voltages at the fault terminals uh, in this way because if you remember we discussed it uh, even before that uh, the little bit i mean uh, discuss that uh, we have made this discussion before that uh, the three sequence network of the let's say the generator where we have only source in the positive sequence uh, network so uh, these are the sequence voltages where the source in the zero and the positive sequence network uh, is zero there is no source and only we have a source in the positive sequence network so i mean this exactly represent this situation because if, if one look here v naught is equal to zero and because these, these two entries are zero so it will be equal to minus z naught uh, i naught which is exactly the case here so i mean this is the same situation uh, which we have discussed before so now these are the these are the sequence uh, voltages uh, at the fault terminal so this is the pre fault voltage and this is the impedance matrix zero sequence positive sequence negative sequence impedance and these are the sequence currents so correspondingly uh, as i have discussed and you know that now very well that if you want to convert i mean let's say the sequence component into the phase component we should know the transformation matrix because the uh, phase quantities are related with the sequence quantities through the transformation matrix so this is now uh, v i uh, v not so uh, v sequence sorry so knowing the sequence component of the voltage multiplying it with the transformation matrix a we get the phase components which is shown here so this is the this is basically the transformation matrix a and that is the uh, matrix representing the sequence voltages so in this way we will found the uh, i mean the sequence component of the voltage at the fault terminal and then we can even from that we can get the uh, uh, phase voltages so now we have theoretically discussed this uh, single line uh, to ground fault and now using this uh, knowledge we will now solve a problem uh, to uh, i mean apply this knowledge and uh, analyze the uh, fault so once again as i mentioned in the beginning of this uh, lecture that uh, we will only discuss the single line to ground fault although we have other types of the unbalanced faults but uh, i mean i will only discuss the single line to ground fault maybe the other types you can discuss uh, in some other uh, course so now let's start uh, the this i mean solving a problem and we apply the knowledge that we have uh, just i mean uh, discussed so uh, now let me uh, discuss the uh, a problem where we will apply the knowledge that we have gained and the discussion we have met uh, so far so i mean as i as i mentioned that this is exactly the same problem we discussed even yesterday and that's why i went through this problem uh, in the beginning of this lecture even in detail so uh, to revise your uh, i mean to revise the contents also to refresh your memories and to let's say uh, discuss the problem uh, in a better way so uh, i mean this was the problem that we discussed yesterday uh, this is exactly the same problem and we are now only on the load uh, bus we are only considering one motor where we have an impedance to the ground so this problem and this is exactly the same the only difference is that we are not considering the uh, let's say other load we are only considering just one load so this is the same absolutely the same problem so now uh, as we have uh, discussed that in a, in a single line to ground fold the uh, situation is that we connect all the three uh, we connect all the three uh, networks, sequence network in series 
through three ZF at the fault terminal. So this is the resulting situation for a single line to ground fault. Three sequence networks in series through the three ZF, ZF I mean impedance, which is the impedance to the for the fault, and this is the fault terminal. So now uh, let's say uh, discuss this problem where we have a generator and I, I mean I, I discussed this problem before so uh, now we have all the necessary components of a power system we have generation we have transmission and we have utilization and in between we have transformers so now uh, considering that the uh, MVA of the system is 100 and also now uh, Considering that the transformer is delta y, where the y side with the secondary side is grounded, but once again in the zero sequence network, which we have discussed, that there will be an isolation between the two sides. Similar is the case here. Uh, and I mean all the all the related values are given here. We have a subtransient reactance. If you remember, I discussed that uh, we will consider it as x one. In the positive sequence network, the negative sequence uh, uh, inductive reactance and the zero sequence reactance are given, and this is uh, the positive sequence inductive reactance because we made this discussion before that positive sequence reactance can either be subtransient, transient, or steady state reactance. In this case, it is taken as subtransient reactance, and this is negative sequence uh, reactance and this is the zero sequence reactance. Similarly, the MVF that uh, I mean transformer is given as I mentioned that the MVF the whole system is 100 and the transformer is uh, let's say uh, um, changing the primary voltage or the generation voltage from 13.8 to 138 kilovolt. So the secondary side voltage is 138 kilovolt and the primary side voltage is 13.8 kilovolt and the leakage reactance of the transformer is 0.1. We made this discussion before that in a per unit system, uh, I mean, uh, we have just one impedance. Although uh, in the, the actual quantities, the actual impedance on both the side of the transformer are different, but once we convert the quantities into per unit, uh, we have just one value. That discussion we have made even in the beginning of this course, you know, we were discussing the per unit quantities. So, similarly, we have the uh, reactance of the second transformer in per unit is 0 0.1 and this is the data for the Y connected uh, three phase synchronous motor where the neutral point is connected to the ground through the uh, reactance XN. So the values are given this is once again X uh, of the of the motor so this should be X1 but obviously we will put subscript M to represent motor and G to represent the generator. So now uh, the quantities are given in, in the per unit but here for the transmission line uh, the quantities are given you know so we need to convert these quantities into per unit first so the first task uh, is that draw per unit sequence networks we have to draw all the three sequence networks we have discussed that even in the in the yesterday's lecture and also in the beginning of this lecture I went uh, through those contents before to revise the uh, last lecture so uh, we need to draw the per unit sequence networks also the uh, fault voltage or the pre-fault voltage is given which is 1.05 with an angle of 0 so this is the pre-fault voltage uh, so now converting these uh, quantities which are you know into per unit we know that for converting uh, impedances into the per unit we should know the base impedance and the base impedance is equal to so the base impedance which is we represent as it b will be equal to u b square divided by is base so u b in this case if one look here on this on the secondary side or on the transmission line the voltage is 138 kilovolt so uh, this is basically this term is the uh, z b and this is the uh, impedance you know of the transmission line so dividing the impedance or the in this case the reactance because we are considering lossless line the resistance is zero so uh, we are dividing and we have also discussed that the negative and the positive sequence uh, impedances of the transmission line are the same because to all uh, to the positive negative sequence current the same impedance is offered uh, the uh, 
zero sequence reactants however we discussed yesterday that it is approximately taken as three times x1 and as one can clearly see here x1 is 20 so 3x1 which is the zero sequence reactance is 60 ohm so even this value i mean validate the the discussion that we have made yesterday so now uh, the x line uh, in per unit 1 2 which is positive and negative sequence i mean the same so x1 per unit will be equal to x2 per unit and it is equal to uh, 20 divided by the z base which is equal to u b square divided by s v and the resultant value is 0 0.105 in per unit similarly uh, now the uh, zero sequence value in per unit will be equal to 60 divided by the same value because the base impedance is the same so that will be equal to 0 0.315 per unit so now we have all the quantities uh, or all the uh, relevant quantities in per unit so now we will draw in the first uh, task the per unit sequence networks so i mean we have discussed it before uh, so as i have i mean uh, mentioned it couple, quite many times that in the positive sequence network we have the uh, we will consider the source in the positive sequence network and in the other sequence networks the source will be zero for the generator as well as for the synchronous motor so accounting for that fact now and also accounting for the isolation we will consider the zero sequence network the isolation between the primary and secondary side and taking these values into account we will draw now the sequence networks so in the positive sequence network where we have voltage source in the on the generator side as well as on the motor side so the sequence network will look like that so this will now be the uh, sequence network this is the positive sequence network where we have a voltage source on the generator side as well as on the motor side this is bus number one and that is bus number two in in that in between we have a transformer transmission line another transformer and as the positive sequence uh, reactance is equal to 0 0.15 the per unit uh, reactance of the transformer is 0.1 that we i mean of the line we have already determined x1 x2 which are equal and x0 also so now taking x1 or x2 because both are equal 0 0.105 and taking all the other values the sequence positive sequence network looks like that where we have voltage source uh, for the in only in the positive sequence network we have discussed that before so now this is 0 0.15 which is the positive sequence uh, reactance this is the reactance of the transformer afterwards we have the line where x1 is equal to 0 0.105 so it is shown here similarly for the transformer it is also 0 0.1 and then for the motor we have a value of 0 0.2 so that is shown here and the voltage source in the positive sequence network so this is now the case of the or the network uh, representing the positive sequence of this whole uh, I mean arrangement of, of the uh, power system where we have all the necessary components generation transmission utilization and also we have transformers so now this is the positive sequence network and the negative sequence network uh, before sh I mean uh, discussing that even we have made this discussion before but anyhow uh, to refresh your memories once again I would mention that in the negative sequence network we will have no voltage source because voltage source only uh, is considered in the positive sequence network or taken in the positive sequence network so now considering the negative sequence value this value is the same and also the line value now for the second for the negative reactance is also the same and this x2 for the motor is 0.21 and considering that there will be no voltage source so now the negative sequence network will look like that 0.17 which is the negative sequence reactance for the generator 0.1 the same because this is transformer line value is also the same transformer value is also the same and 0.21 which is the negative sequence reactance of the motor so that is 0.21 and once again no voltage sources in the negative sequence network and now I will also show you the zero sequence network but before that it's important to mention that we have I mean now impedance to the ground or the neutral is connected to the ground having now impedance in between the neutral point and the ground point so 
and on the motor side we have that value. And if you remember, in the zero sequence network, this value will appear as 3 xn. Also now considering that there is an isolation between the primary and secondary side, similarly on, on the other side, we have to take that into account, also accounting for the fact that these reactants will now appear in the zero sequence network and at the two buses the isolation. So the zero sequence network now will look like that. So now uh, the zero sequence reactance is 0 0.05 for the generator and I mean also uh, 0 0.1 for the for the uh, motor and the xn is 0 0.03 0 0.05 but in the zero sequence network it will appear as 3 xn so now the zero sequence network is shown here. We have an isolation at bus number 1 as well as at bus number 2 because there is an isolation in the zero sequence network between the delta and the primary uh, and on the y and the primary secondary side. So this is point zero. I mean point zero five, which is zero sequence impedance or reactance of the of the generator. Point uh, one of the of the motor, which is shown here as point one. And as I mentioned, that xn in the zero sequence network will appear as three xn. So that's why we multiply three with the xn, which is point zero five. And this is now the value and the isolation at the two buses because we are now considering the zero sequence network. So this will now be the uh, I mean the network where we have at two points where we have isolation. So these are the values. This is the value I mean for the transformer because we discussed even before that Z0 is equal to Z1 equal to Z2 for the transformer for the transformer and that is the leakage impedance. The only thing that is important is that when we will draw the zero sequence network one has to take consideration of the connection of the two sides. That is important. So in this case we have an isolation between the primary and secondary side so that's why it is shown here on both the, the side. So now this is the zero sequence network where we have also considered 3xn on the motor side which is 0 0.05 so that will become 0.15. So this was the first task to draw the per unit sequence networks. So we have drawn the sequence networks, the positive sequence network where we consider the voltage sources, the negative sequence network where we have no source also in the zero sequence network, we have no source, we also consider the isolation because of the transformers, connections and we also consider the 3x n on the motor side because on the, on the generator side there was no x n. So now we have completed the first task and now we will uh, move toward the second task which is related to the to the uh, I mean which is related to this particular uh, case and this uh, I mean the task says that we have to find I mean we have to reduce sequence networks to a theorem equivalent uh, as viewed from bus number 2 so now assuming that we have fold at bus number 2 we have to find the sequence networks or we have to find the Thunen uh, equivalent networks uh, viewed from, from bus number 2. So now let's say we have a single line to ground fault on bus number 2 because we are considering single line to ground fault. So let's say we have a single line to ground fault on bus number 2 and we view uh, the system from bus number 2. So these will be now we have to draw the equivalent circuits and if you remember we discussed that uh, even before. So now, the looking uh, to the to the system from bus number two, the uh, sequence network, or let's say the positive sequence network, will now look like that. I mean, looking from bus number two, uh, we will short the because you know that in the theorem. Uh, equivalent circuits, the sources are shorted. So we will have these, I mean, four reactances and this reactance in parallel because we are weaving the system from bus number two. So these four elements and this will be in series. So, and similarly, I mean, for the zero sequence network, uh, we will again watch the network from this terminal and also uh, we will weave the. Uh, network again from the uh, bus number 2. So for the positive 
negative and zero sequence networks. Now, the equivalent Thevenin circuits when viewed from terminal 2 will look like that. So, as I mentioned that in the case of the positive sequence network, we will take the parallel, I mean combination of these impedances and this one. So, these and this one, these two are in parallel. So, and now the network positive sequence equivalent Thevenin network will look like that, where Z1, which is the positive sequence impedance in the in the equivalent Thevenin network will be equal to the parallel, uh, I mean, uh, I mean we have to apply the, uh, the parallel rule. So, this reactance will be in parallel with these one which are in series. So, 0.2, J.02 is in parallel with the four reactances. So, these four are in series and because we, we are weaving the system from terminal 2 or from bus number 2. So, with this one, these four elements are in parallel. So, point J2 in parallel with the four reactances. So, the resultant value will be this one. And this is the, once again, we are supposed to find the Thevenin equivalent networks viewed from bus number 2. So, viewing the, uh, I mean the system from bus number 2, as we have already determined the, the sequence uh, networks. So, for the positive sequence network, I mean viewing from this point, these four are in series and in parallel with this one. Similarly, for the seg ne negative sequence network, these four are in series and this in parallel with this one. And for the zero sequence network, this value and I mean uh, we have only uh, uh, this value which is in uh, which will be considered. So, uh, in the zero sequence network, we have only this value as we have an isolation between part 1 uh, and bus 1 and bus number 2. So, the zero sequence network will have only this value because there is an isolation. You can clearly see, I mean, because of transformer in the zero sequence network, we have an isolation. So, I mean, the viewing from, from bus number 2, we will have only this impedance and these two are in series. So, now equivalent uh, Thevenin networks for the positive, negative and zero sequence uh, networks will look like that. So, as I mentioned, in the case of the positive, these four are in series, this is in parallel, so the resultant value will be like that. And we are considering the voltage source only in the positive sequence network. In the negative sequence network, these four values are in parallel with this one. So we take the parallel, uh, I mean, the parallel impedances and then we get the resultant value to be this one. And for the zero sequence uh, network, we have these two in series. So, 0.1 plus J0.15. So, J0.1 plus J0.15 will be equal to point J0.25. So, now these are the Thevenin equivalent networks. Thevenin, Thevenin equivalent networks we would from we would from bus number bus number two. so these are the Thevenin equivalent networks of the positive negative and zero sequence network so we find the Thevenin equivalent networks of these three networks positive negative and zero and these are the equivalent Thevenin networks so I mean uh, while uh, reducing the uh, sequence networks in the equivalent networks, one has to obviously consider all those various facts. For instance, uh, the isolation when we will consider the zero sequence uh, network, and also obviously the uh, I mean the values. So these are the equivalent networks. So the second task was to reduce sequence networks to Thevenin equivalent networks. And we are considering pre fault voltage as 1.05, which we have only considered in the positive sequence network. In the other sequence networks, which are the equivalent networks, the voltage source is zero or there is no voltage source. And these are the equivalent uh, inductive reactances.
so now uh, we have done with the uh, with the second task and uh, the third task is to to find the uh, sub transient it is i mean the third task is related to the uh, calculation some calculation and the third task says that you have to calculate sub transient fault current in per unit and also in the kilo ampere for a bolted single line to ground fault at bus number 2 what does it mean bolted it means that we have discussed it even before that the fault which appear on bus number 2 will connect this bus directly to the ground bolted type fault mean the, the impedance to the ground or the the fault impedance is considered as zero in a bolted type fault so the task number 3 says that we have to calculate sub transient fault current in per unit and also in the kilo ampere for a bolted single line to ground fault at bus number 2 also we are supposed to calculate the line to ground voltages at bus number 2 so we are also supposed to find the line to ground voltages so now uh, we have i mean uh, discussed the two tasks also we have uh, found the thevenin equivalent uh, networks even before that we found the positive sequence negative sequence and zero sequence networks and then the second task was related to the uh, finding of the thevenin equivalent network so we found the thevenin three thevenin equivalent networks view from the uh, bus number 2 where a single line to ground fault occurs so as i mentioned in the in the in the beginning of this lecture that when we were discussing theoretically the single line to ground fault we observe that uh, all the sequence currents are the same and the uh, the um, i mean the voltages uh, let me find the page so uh, the condition was um, saying that uh, yeah it, it is here so the, i mean when we were discussing theoretically the single line to ground fault so i mean from these were the two conditions that we observed first of all all the sequence currents are the same and secondly the sum of the sequence voltages is equal to 3 zfi1 which means that we connect the sequence networks in series at the fault terminal through the impedance 3 zf so that's we observed before and uh, we uh, made that connection and the situation was like that three sequence networks in series because all the sequence currents in a single line to ground fault are the same and they are connected at the fault terminal through the impedance 3 zf so now applying exactly that information or that knowledge we have discussed before so now we, these are the thevenin equivalent networks view from terminal number 2 Obviously, let's say if the task is to find, let's say if, if it is, let's say if the task says that, let's say there is a uh, single, I mean single line to ground fault on bus number one, then obviously the thevenin equivalent networks would be different because we will get from terminal one or from terminal two. I mean these networks uh, or these, uh, I mean uh, finding the equivalent network would have different values of the, of the, of the impedances. So this is important to know that if you view it from terminal two or from terminal one, the, the equivalent networks will have different value, different values of the impedances. But anyhow, in this particular task, it is uh, I mean mentioned that we are supposed uh, we are supposing a fault, single line to ground fault at bus number two. So we viewed the system from terminal two, and we equivalently I mean found the uh, network, I mean the the sequence networks. Uh, for the positive, negative, and zero sequence network, what we call what we call basically thevenin equivalent networks. So now we have these three thevenin equivalent networks, and as I mentioned, that in a single line to ground fault, we will connect all these three in series at the fault terminal through impedance three zf. But if we look to the statement of the question, it says a bolted type fault. So in a bolted type fault. The impedance to the ground is the impedance to the ground is zero. So it means this will be zero. So now the resulting situation will look like that. Where 
the three sequence networks, equivalent sequence networks that we found or we derive for the positive, negative and zero sequence networks when we viewed the, sy the system from terminal or from bus number two. And since the state, the question says that it's a bolted type fault at bus number two, so the impedance to the ground is zero. So now we are supposed, as I mean the question uh, states that we are supposed to find the current in per unit, subtransient current in the per unit, also the current in the kilo ampere. And we are also supposed to find the line to ground voltage. So now uh, we have, a, I mean, applied the knowledge that we discussed before. We connect the three sequence networks in series at the fault terminal through the impedance to the ground, but because it is a bolt type fault, so the impedance to the ground is zero. So now we can, I mean, find the, the current. So the current, as we, one can clearly see, I mean, the three currents are the same. We have a voltage source and it is, uh, I mean, mentioned even before that we assume the fault voltage to be 1.05 with an angle of zero. So we know the voltage in per unit. We know all these impedances. So and the currents are the same. So now the currents are the same. It is equal to the voltage source divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. And if you remember, when we were discussing the theory, if let's say it's not a bolt type fault, then we have to also consider the term here 3ZF plus 3ZF. But because it's a bolt type fault, so that ZF is zero. So that's why we only consider zero, Z, uh, zero sequence positive and negative sequence impedances. So knowing the voltage, dividing it by these impedances, which we have found, uh, I mean, for these Thevenin equivalent networks, the positive is 0 0.13893, the negative is 0 0.14562, and the zero is zero sequence impedance is 0.25. So now, taking all those values and the voltage, we can get. Uh, we get the current which is equal to 1.96427 minus J 1.96427. This is in per unit. So, this is the current in the per unit. Also, now, because we are supposed to, uh, we are supposed to find the, uh, the current, uh, I mean, uh, in kilo ampere. So, uh, but even before that, the fault current, I mean the fault current in the phase A, because this is the sequence current, so we have discussed even before, because all the three currents, since I A is equal to I naught plus I1 plus I2, and since all the three are equal, so it will be equal to, let's say, 3 I1, because all the three are equal, which is mentioned here. So, now multiplying it with 3, we will get the phase current, which is equal to uh, minus J, 5.8928 per unit. So, this is the per unit value. And we are also supposed to find it in the kilo ampere. So, for converting per unit into kilo ampere, you now we have to multiply the per unit value with the base value. And for finding the base current, I mean this is the expression. Where well, this is the three phase expression, and the base current will be equal to S base divided by under, three, under the root 3 U base. Now, uh, looking to the system once again, uh, where the fault appear at the bus number 2. So, the voltage at bus number 2 will be equal to as is a trans transformer which convert the transmission voltage into 13.8 kV. So, the system in is 100 and the voltage at bus number 2 will be 13.8 kV. So, now using I mean S base as 100 MVA under the root 3 which is in the 3 phase expression and U base 13.8 kV we get a base current of 4.1837 kilo ohm. So this is the base value. And now multiplying the base value with the per unit value, we will get the current. So the current, the fault current in the kilo ampere, where we multiply the per unit value with the base value, we get the current which is equal to 24.65 kilo ohm. What, well now what I mean one can see quite clearly that the uh, I mean, uh, the current is uh, when we uh, when we let's say have normal operating condition, or when we consider a no load condition, the current was zero, because under no load condition the current uh, is zero. But when a short circuit type of fault on a single line appears, then the current is 24.65 kilo ohm, which is I mean quite high value, and that's why the protection schemes uh, must. Uh, operate 
in order to uh, clear the fault. Otherwise, if such high current flows through the system, I mean it can damage components. But anyhow, that is related to protection. But the value of the fault current equiliampere is 24.65. Uh, that is the value of the, of the fault current. The other task is the uh, also to calculate the line to ground voltages. And we discussed that uh, when we were discussing the theory that the voltages, if we, if we now the sequence uh, voltages, we can convert it into the phase voltages by using the transformation matrix. So now the sequence voltages are equal to, as we now uh, from uh, this discussion, I mean we have made this discussion, the pre-fault voltage is 1.05 per unit. So knowing this value also we, now the zero positive and negative sequence uh, impedances. So we put those, we can put these values because we have found it and these are, I mean, uh, equal to these values. We now the zero sequence impedance, we now the positive sequence impedance and we now the negative sequence impedance. So putting those values also, knowing that the pre-fault voltage is 1.05. So now taking the multiplication of the of the of the matrices. So uh, these are the sequence currents. So now also uh, we have uh, find. I mean we have we have found the the, the sequence uh, currents as well, and we found that the sequence current is equal to. Uh, we 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 just have carried this. I mean discussion. And we found that the uh, zero sequence current is equal to 1.96425. And because all the currents are the same, so taking the same value of the currents, because in a single line to ground fault, all the three sequence currents are the same, we found uh, that current to be equal to 1.96425 per unit. So now, this is the pre fault voltage, these are the sequence components, and these are the sequence currents. And we now that these three are equal. And now putting those values which we have found before, also the values of the zero, I mean the uh, impedances values that we have found uh, for the Thevenin equivalent networks. So, I mean putting these values for the impedances, also for the currents which are equal, we will get this. Map. You know the multiplication of the matrix. So, I mean that I will not go step by step, but rather I am uh, putting the value here. So, this is now the zero sequence voltage, the positive sequence voltage and negative sequence voltage and as you know that for converting basically the sequence voltages into the phase voltages, we should now transformation matrix and the sequence voltages. So these are single, I mean line to ground voltage, line to ground voltages VAG or VA because VAG equal to VA minus VG. So because this is zero, so it is exactly equal to VA. So these are line to ground voltages. And this is the transformation matrix A and these are the sequence voltages. So putting, I mean these values, transformation matrix, multiplying with transformation matrix, knowing that this is, I mean the vector, this is a quantity which is equal to one angle, 120. These are identities and even we discussed that for I square. So now uh, multiplying the transformation matrix with the sequence voltages, we get the line to ground voltages. And as one can see, that because the single line to ground fault appear on phase A, so that's why, and it's a bolted type fault, which means that it will directly connect phase A terminal. It will connect the phase A terminal into the into the uh, into the ground. So if phase A terminal is, I mean, we have a bolted type fault, so that will be connected directly to the ground. That's why the voltage is zero, and we have, uh, I mean, uh, some values for the other. Uh, two uh, uh, phase voltages. So we have values for the other two phases, but the single since the single line to ground fault voltage type appear on phase A, so that's why the value is zero. So now this is an unbalanced system. One can clearly see. I mean, although the magnitude is the same, but uh, if one let's say find the difference of the angle, so this is. I mean, one can clearly see this is an unbalanced situation. I mean, even from the values, one can see. One phase is zero, the other phase has some values. So this is an unbalanced system. And now we have completed all the three tasks. Where we in the in the first task we found the sequence networks of the whole system. We found the sequence network of the whole system. Then the second task was related to uh, the uh, finding of the of the Thevenin equivalent networks view from bus number two. And the third task was related to the uh, the finding of the 
of the uh, I mean uh, current as well as the line to ground voltages. So we in the beginning of this lecture, let me summarize now uh, the the lecture or uh, I mean observe I mean uh, let, let me summarize the lecture. So in the beginning of this lecture, I mentioned that uh, we have different types of uh, single line I mean we have different types of unbalanced faults but in this particular course I will only talk about the single line to ground fault we theoretically discuss this case we derived some I mean expressions and the important expression was that uh, we can connect all the three sequence networks in series and we also observed that the sequence currents are the same and the sequence networks they are connected in series at the fault terminal through the impedance to the ground. So we met I mean we observed these we theoretically discuss it and then we apply it to this particular problem and we determine or we completed the, the different tasks. So uh, now with this discussion I end this lecture and also I end the discussion related to the faults, uh, fault and I mean the related to the fault analysis. So as I, I mean I have I mean I, I mentioned it even before that in this particular course power system analysis we majorly cover three uh, important uh, let's say uh, contents. One is related to the power flow which we have already covered. We discussed that quite in detail and we discussed the two different methods of the power flow Gaussian and Newton Upson. Then we started discussion on the faults and we discuss both the balanced and unbalanced faults. And uh, we discuss all the, so the sequence networks and the symmetrical components and uh, we only analyze the single line to ground fault. And we, I mean in today's lecture I even solved a problem to make the theoretical understanding more clear to you. So with this now I end the discussion on the single line to ground fault as well as I end the discussion on the unbalanced faults. So inshallah in the next recorded lecture I will start the discussion on the third important uh, topic I would say that is related to the stability and that will be the I mean the last uh, topic that we will cover uh, in this uh, particular course. So uh, I mean with this now I end this lecture and once again I would say uh, thank you very much for your attention. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته